Hi everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks YouTube channel. I am your host Risho for today's video. So in today's video, we are going to build a super cool food delivery application in React.js and Monstack. So I hope you will be liking this video and the UI UX is pretty much awesome in today's video. So don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends those who are learning this uh, Monstack technology. And we will be like using React.js for our front end and MongoDB as our back end and Node.js and Express for our server or back end, right? So I hope you will be enjoying today's video. You will be having all the full fledged functionalities like uh, adding to card, placing the order, then adding to your favorites, then adding the products and uh, featured items and then filtering the items and searching the items, right? So I hope you will be liking today's video so let's get started without wasting any time right yeah so as you can see this uh, awesome food delivery website so we have some great banner image and then there are different food categories and there are most popular food and uh, you can see how uh, beautiful this whole web application is looking and it is made completely on react JS and its backend is on node.js and mongodb right so there are filter option there are price option and you can add your filters and you can do the search and all the things right so this is uh, looking really cool and if you add this in your resume it's going to give a huge uh, plus point to your resume right so we will be building this whole application so you can see there is a login option and there is a sign up and all the things it is completely going to be uh, done in this uh, tutorial for today and i hope you will be liking this video so give it a thumbs up and uh, yeah so you can see we have logged in successfully and then we can uh, add things to favorite and you can see the things are working right and also like you can go in the favorite section you can see the foods that you have marked for favorite and then you can add to cart and then you can place your order so you can see the details page and then you can click on uh, there are different details with ratings and all the things then you can click on any of the items and it will take you through the details page and then you can go and click on the add to cart also so i will show you so you can see the add to cart page is also looking really good and uh, yeah so we are going to build this awesome website so you can see the add to cart option we can add multiple foods then we can increase their quantities also and then we can add our delivery address and then we can simply place our orders so i am creating a dummy delivery details to show you that we can place your orders and then you will see order place successfully right so and the order details also you can do but that's a homework for you guys so you just uh, do that uh, as a learning stuff because i won't be showing you that thing because you guys need to learn right so this one is also responsive so you can see for smaller screen it is responsive right and you have all the stuffs so yeah that's it so let's just begin with the tutorial so first thing you can go in my github and you can see you can follow me and the repository will be present the previous one is e-commerce and you can you will be also getting this repository of the food delivery app in my github you can follow that code and i will be providing a drive link in the youtube video so you can get these images and all the stuffs from there right so we have a readme.txt open that one and there are some installing dependencies and all the stuff so first thing go in a uh, directory where you want to do and then write npx create react app client so what it will do is it will create a basic starter application of react.js and create a new folder server where your server will be made so do cd server and then write npm in it so it will initialize with the all the basic by default uh, things and then copy and paste the dependencies that are required for the server right so i have done that one do the same with me and then it all the dependencies will be installed and your client that is basically the react application will also be created right uh, so let's wait till it get completed and meanwhile you can also share this video with your friends like those who are learning react JS or monstack okay and you can also comment down like uh, what else video do you want in the youtube channel and if you want to learn angular js also that also you can comment right so yeah so let's just wait so you can see in the client like all of the folders are getting ready so yeah it is done happy hacking so do cd client and after that to start the application write npm start 
and it will start your server right so you can see the basic react starter application now we have to clear the stuff that are not required so from src we will be removing all the stuff that are not required and uh, inside the app.js there are few stuff that are also not required we will remove that one and i will write hello gfg and you can see in the screen that hello gfg is coming right so i have removed all the stuff that are not required and yeah you, i will open in the big screen also right so after this the next thing that we have to do here is uh, open the folder uh, food delivery app and open the client and src now in this we have to copy and paste the utils so just simply paste the utils and then create a new folder called components and in components paste the button and the input txt file so these are basic button and the input txt that is already created by me and also we have a index.css so that open the index.css from src and paste that one so this is basically the fonts and all the stuffs basic thing not that much you can go through the button and the text input so these are common every video i provide this thing okay and uh, in utils you have themes and images as i told you so now we will be creating the folder pages for which basically our different pages are there like the favorite cart uh, then authentication all the pages right so first i will write home.js and then initialize with the basic uh, react export function then favorite page we have and then we will be having say cart page cart.jsx so do the same for all and then we have the authentication page so after this is done the next thing is uh, say food details page and we have the food listing page basically so these are all the pages that we are going to build today and uh, if anything is left out i will add that one okay so and in the components create a new folder uh, sorry a new file called navbar and uh, do the basic thing and now we are good to go so do cd client and uh, install all the dependencies copy from the readme and paste it and then it will be installing all the dependencies that are required after that come to the app.jsx and then we have our starter thing right so we need to have our themes the first thing is the themes and the style components so we are going to use style components for the whole application what is style components using style components you can define your own components and the style in this js folder only so say container i have written so what is this container container would be a style component so for of now let us start with the theme provider because at the root level we have to provide the theme because we have the light theme you can change it to dark theme also of anything so like that we need to have the theme provider so i will start like once if the dependencies get installed so let's see okay so all the dependencies are being installed right so i will write theme provider which is coming from the style components inside the theme provider we will be having our browse router because we will be navigating through react router dom so we have to pass browse router at your root level then inside this browse browse router we will be having our container so container inside that container we will be having our navbar right so i will write container so container will be a style component so container equals to style dot div and navbar we have to import that from our components so i will write import navbar from dot slash component slash navbar okay so now in the container if you reload that you will you can see nothing is coming right but uh, in comp navbar there is a div navbar so let us do one thing so let's define the theme first so it will be visible so we have to pass a theme equals to light theme that is coming from our utils so i will import that from utils and if you reload you can see navbar is coming now right so after navbar we will be having our different routes basically the pages so first route will be the uh, basic slash that is the element would be our home page so i will write home so let us import home i will import home from dot slash pages slash home done and now if you reload you can see that uh, we have to define the routes and that thing we will import that one from react router dom itself and you can see uh, below the navbar the home is coming right so yeah that was the starting thing we have done and now let's get started with the navbar first of all so in navbar first of all let us import the style components 
and uh, after importing the style components we will wrap the thing with a nav and then we will be having a nav bar container nav container and inside the nav container we will be having our nav logo the first thing is a nav logo and uh, it is a link basically which will take us always to the uh, slash and then inside that we have a logo the logo would be an image then after nav logo we have nav items where our nav links are present that is home so uh, then our foods and all the stuff so i will write nav link to home and then i will copy and paste and then change to dishes and other stuffs like orders and uh, the rest of the things that we have i will simply add those things so once this is done i will just start with the creating the style component so i will write const nav equals to style dot div and i will paste this one and then change the name accordingly then nav container then it will be nav logo then it would be logo then it would be nav items then it would be nav links and at the last it would be the button container which we will be using so if you reload you can see the stuffs are coming right but uh, first thing let us import the logo first so i will import the logo image from our utils and then in the logo image logo i will pass the src as logo image and also changing the style components it is style dot image right and now if you reload it you can see but uh, before that let's get started with the nav right so we will be having a background color height and display flex and then we will have align item center just by content center and font size then position would be sticky then top 0 z index 10 color would be white like that done and after that we will be having our logo height as 34 pixel then nav container would width will be 100 percent and max width 1400 pixel then padding and display and gap you have to provide like me and it will be looking like this if you reload it's looking good so after that we will be having our nav logo uh, container which will be link r now let us import link r so i will import link as link r so for that write import link r from react router dom and if you reload the error is coming you have to do like import uh, you have to do import okay so before that uh, write the style of the link r and uh, change it as like link as link r now it is good so done and after that in the nav items it will be an unordered list so style.ul where with 100% display flex align item center and uh, after that justify content center gap 32 and padding and uh, after that uh, the next thing that we are going to do here is the list style would be none and if you uh, for smaller screen display would be none then nav link would be a nav link itself which will be imported from react auto dom again and this nav link will have display flex align item center color would be text primary and font fit 500 cursor pointer transition and then we will add text decoration none and a hover effect with color of theme primary and if it is active then we will give your border bottom and uh, rest of the things are looking pretty much good and you can see our navigation links are also working fine so after this we have done with the thing and now the next thing that we have here is a button container so i will add button container and then we will add uh, the navigation link and it would be a search and inside this nav link it would be a search icon so i will write search rounded and it is going to be imported from mui icons from mui material icons right and after that we have other things so its color would be inherited and font size would be 30 pixel and then other things like uh, we have the favorite and the shopping cart so just import the icons and we have the same thing right and then after that uh, this is done you can see the items are coming but not in a proper manner so we have to style the button container for that and we have a button also like for sign in and sign up so button and text would be sign in and uh, let us import this button so i will write import button from dot slash button done 
so after this the next thing that we are going to do is uh, style the button container its width will be 100 percent height 100 percent display flex just to make an flex uh, end and rest of the things and then you can see it is looking pretty much similar to my one and after this uh, okay so you can see the alignment is a little bit disturbed let us see what the problem is okay this part are correct button container is also perfect okay got it so button container is basically outside the nav container so that's why the error was coming it should be inside right so now you can see it is perfect it is uh, the similar as that we had so now it is looking good and uh, now for the smaller screen mobile icon we will be having a hamburger icon at the top right so we will be adding a menu rounded and uh, its style would be colored inherit and then let's define the menu icon mobile icon sorry so style.dev after that we will be having also the mobile icons so the mobile icons are basically the this uh, this items the cart and all the stuffs I will paste that one and after that I will change it to mobile icons and if we reload you can see it is coming right so yeah add the color of text primary display none for bigger screen and display flex and align item center and all those stuffs and for mobile icons display would be none and uh, for bigger screen it's okay not display uh, yeah so this is basically the uh, how the nav bar is going to look like so now let us define a constant uh, use state hook so is open and set is open it is a style it is a use state hook i will write use state and by default it should be false now when you click on this mobile icon it should be visible uh, so i will do the set is open as not of is open so now uh, let us define is open when is open is true and then we will have our uh, navigation links that is our menu item should be coming so i will write mobile menu and inside that i will paste the navigation links so this mobile menu uh, i have to pass is open equals to is open so now in mobile menu let us define the style div and then uh, inside that we will be having a flex display direction column gap 6 pixel padding of uh, 6 and list style none with 80% and all the stuffs that are required just we have to add that styles and uh, we have to add a transform that is when it is open it will translate y to 0 and translate y to minus 1 if not and border and box shadow and opacity and z index we have to provide right so now you can see if you click it is opening and if you don't click it is not opening and if you click on any of the link it should close so for that simply i will add a on click when you click on this one so what will happen is it will set the is open as false done so i will copy and paste this one done so now you can see the things are perfect and after that uh, the next thing is navigation bar is completed i guess so yeah the next thing is we will be getting started with our the authentication page so yeah so authentication page is basically a model which will be coming in front of the application so first thing that we have to do here is in authentication we will just simply uh, so in authentication we will simply give a model at the base and then after that we will have our container and then inside that container we will be having two things that is left and right so the same thing left and right concept that i have already explained in my previous videos also left and right the two things one image and the form so i will uh, import the model and the style components and then i will define the container and left and right thing so i will define container then left and then right 
so in the container we will be having the style like flex one height hundred percent and all those stuffs and now uh, we have to do one thing like in the app dot js we have to define a const open so open auth and set open auth because when this would be true then only we have to show the auth so it would be a style dot uh, use state sorry and by default it is false right and then after the routes let us define that thing that open auth is true so in that case that is and and we will show the authentication and we will pass the set open auth and open auth also as the props to the authentication page right and uh, this we have to also pass in the nav bar because we have to control this from the nav bar itself so in the nav bar what we will do here is we will take this as a props in the nav bar open auth and the set open auth right and then let we, we will be using like say if someone clicks on the sign in button then we will set the on click method and then we will set the open auth as true okay and then i will copy this one and in this uh, mobile menu icons also i will put this one so in this day we will be having sign in and sign up both so the sign up would be outline and sign in would be not and then we can give a style of display flex and uh, you can see how it is looking then give it a gap of 12 pixel yeah now it is looking good right so if you click on sign up or sign in it should be functional so for that uh, if open auth is true in the authentication so set open auth and open auth we are taking then in the model we have to define that open equals to open auth and on close we will be calling the error function that is set open auth as false right so that is basically how we do that thing so you can see now l and r are coming so if you click on the sign in then l and r are coming right so that is how our authentication will come so now the next thing that we have to do here is uh i will define the left as flex one position relative and for the right we will give position relative flex 0 0.9 okay and then we will be giving some color background red and background as blue so you can see that thing okay and after that uh, we will be adding display flex flex direction column padding 40 pixel gap 16 pixel align item center just wait and then center perfect and then let us do one thing that we will be having our uh, sign in page that is uh, we have to create the <sighs> that is we have to create in the authentication left as so for smaller screen size we don't want to show the uh, left part right so i will write display none okay and uh, for right part for smaller screen what we will do here is we will write display flex one okay so you can see the full thing is coming and then we will be having a logo and the image in the left so logo and image is present and then we have to add uh, so left part we will be having the logo and the image and after that uh, we will be importing the logo image and auth image and then we will be using that as our src let's define the logo equals to styled image and uh, image equals to styled image let us give them the styles so if you can reload so i am showing you basically this one with the previous login authentication of the e-commerce website because this is similar type only so i will give position relative height 100 percent with 100 percent and lower position absolute top 40 pixel left 60 pixels at index 10 so you can see the image and the icon is coming perfectly fine and then after that we have our this one right the form so for the form we have uh, in the right so right section let us do the thing so i will add a close button first of all in the right section so in close button we will be having a close icon so let us define the close uh, on click function so set open up as false and then let us define the close button so const close uh, button equals to style dot div and uh, we will be having our uh, position absolute top 20 pixel right 20 pixel border radius 50 percent done and after that we will be having our width 32 pixel and uh, the stuff like that 
so now you can see a close button is coming let us define some other styles like justify and align item center and all those stuff so you can see it is now looking good let us remove the blue color first of all from the right section so yeah now it is looking good right so yeah now let us get started with the text that we have at the bottom so first let's define an auth use state hook that is a const login oh and set login and it is a use state true by default so login if login is true then we will be showing uh, sign in and if it is not then i will be showing sign up so we need to create sign in and sign up pages in our component so just create simply two uh, files sign in and sign up dot jsx and simple thing and we have to import that one okay now sign in and sign up if you see you if you change it to true and false the values are the text are going to change right so uh, we are rendering that stuff and now uh, let us put the sign up inside this one empty tag and uh, sign in sign in and sign up both and then we will be having a text after that so i will write text and i will add say for sign in already have don't have an account and i will have a text button which will take us to sign up so for that button we will be having okay now let's define the text and text button so const text equals to style.div and text button equals to style.div So font size would be 16 pixel, text align center, color would be theme dot text secondary, margin top 16 pixel, um, and rest of the stuff. And then const text button would be style dot div, color and cursor pointer and all the stuff. So you can see it is now looking pretty much good. After that, uh, what we will be doing here is display flex, and yeah, so done. So for sign up also, I will paste the same thing but change the text as. Uh, uh, false in case of login and true in case of uh, sign up done now let's get started with the uh, sign in part so in sign in what we are going to have here is our form basically right so first thing we have title but before that we will wrap the whole thing in a container so we will be having a container then inside that we will be having a div where we will be having our title and the span so title is welcome to Christ or for a food delivery app it will be welcome to food deli and span please log into your details here and then we will be having our div of text input and then we will be having button of say we have to define the text and the thing so first I will import style components from style from style components then I will import uh, text input and the buttons okay so i will import text input from text input dot slash text input and uh, i will import buttons from dot slash button and then i will define the container equals to style dot div and then after that i will define the title uh, and i will define the span okay so this is done so we have defined the stuff and now if you reload and go in the sign in you can see the basic thing that is coming right uh, let's get started with labeling so I will add a label and placeholder for the text input so we will be having email address and password so I will add password and enter your password for the second one and in the button I will add a text of sign in right and in the div add a inline style say an inline style that would be having display flex gap 20 pixel flex direction column and it is looking pretty much nice I guess and for container give it with 100 percent max with 550 display flex flex direction column gap would be 36 pixel and after that the next thing that we have here is our title right so give title uh say font size 32 and for span font size 16 and rest of the stuff okay so once you reload you can see the stuff is looking pretty much cool and we will be copying and pasting the whole thing or the whole stuff but before that we will be having a text button also so text button is style.div uh, which will be forgot password button and I will add a color of text primary and cursor pointer and text align would be end and on hover effect I will change it to primary color and font width would be 500 okay now it is looking good okay so after that we will be having the next thing that is uh, our sign up so I have I have simply pasted that one and I will change the name to sign up 
and in this we will be having some different title so i will just paste the title and the span here and uh, for food daily that we are going to create we will be having different thing but uh, you can follow the thing same and we will be having a input also extra input that is full name and placeholder would be full name enter your full name okay so now you can see our sign up and login is pretty much looking good and remove the text button and change the text to sign up and remove this text button also the style component now it is looking uh, the similar as we have right now for food daily if you have followed this one it will be looking like this basically so the color is different right so it will be looking like this and for the image that we had you have to change one thing simply in the authentication come and change the logo image and auth image so you can see auth image uh, the jpg you have to add instead of png so the color food will be changed the image will be changed okay and uh, you can see the rest of the things are similar okay so after that uh, the next thing that you have to do here is is the home page right so we will get started with the home page our authentication is completed our nav bar is completed so coming to the pages first is the home page so in the home page if you open the application you will see there is a header part right where the banner of the food is there so first i will wrap the whole thing in a container so i will import style components the basic thing and then we have the container so inside this container we will be having our section so section would be image and inside the section there is the image that is the starter and after that there are title say food categories so title i will change it to capital t and uh, what else do we have we have a card wrapper so i will uh, write card wrapper and inside that we have to map the car categories card so i will import categories from our utils category and then i will map that thing category and i will map it for of now as a category card or you can do it like at a card simply and category we have to import that thing so i will first i will define the style components that is container style dot div then we have our uh, rest of the things then there we have section we have image we have the title we have the card wrapper and last one we will remove that one now category we have to import so i will write import category then from dot slash utils slash data so if you reload you can see some of the card 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 are coming so means we have different categories right so let's get started with importing the header image so header image we have to import from utils itself and i will add the src as header image okay for the image but now it is not visible because our image is a style.diff change it to style.image and now you can see the image is coming right so now for the container give a padding of 20 pixel by 30 pixel padding bottom 200 and rest of the stuff and give overflows a y scroll and gap and all those stuff okay and after that we will be having a background of theme.bg for section its width will be 100 percent max width would be 1400 pixel and padding and display and text direction column and gap of 28 pixel right now it is looking good right for bigger screen also it's looking perfect so after that what we have here is a title so first the title would be font size 28 pixel and uh, let us remove this section 100 percent and uh, justify content would be center uh, center i am passing as a prop if it is not center then i will not show that so card wrapper is there and then we will write the card wrapper and for smaller uh, screen we will give it a gap of say 16 pixel and for bigger screen we will give it a gap of say 32 pixel okay done okay so we have another section that are the popular food or the most popular items you can say most popular so that we have to do right so first let's get started with the category card okay so i will write here product category card and let's create this product category card and i will pass the category also so let's create this one in the components i will create a new folder cards and then we have the product category card and inside that uh, let's get started so it is a card who which will be having category then we will write top image then we will be having an image in the top and then we will be having a menu 
and in the menu we will be having buttons so i will write button and that is category dot name which is the button main button that what is the name of the category and then we have a sale which will be having category dot off and in the image i will pass category dot image right and let's define the style components i will import the style and then i will write const card equals to style dot div i will copy paste this one and then change its name first stop then would be image then would be menu then button then sale done right so let's import the product category card also yeah so now you can see the text are coming but let us just define the card right so first thing is image would be img so now you can see images are coming so card let us define the card so its width will be 250 pixel display flex flex direction column and gap and transition and cursor pointer right and after that we will be having our image also whose width will be 100 percent height would be 320 pixel object fit cover and rest of the things and but for smaller screen our card say for media max width of 760 pixel what we will do is so for smaller screen we will change the width to 170 pixel that is for 600 pixel open only and image also i will change its height to say 200 or 230 230 looks good right so yeah i will keep this only so next thing we have the menu so before that we have the top right so in the top i will write display flex align item center just wake and center its position will be relative which is important and in background from hover it should be having a theme of primary then for the menu give it a width of 90 percent position absolute z index color bottom left right okay and then we will be having our button so for the button with 100 percent color is there padding gif and background white border radius 12 pixel and for media smaller size we will be giving a smaller padding and then after that we will be having a sales say position absolute z index color top right font size font width and background padding and rest of the stuff right so now it is looking absolutely fine and pretty much good okay and uh, this is looking very nice so our category card is done but on the sales change it to text primary and uh, button change it to white and uh, we will be having our uh, shadowish card so i will write for menu bottom would be zero and right would be width will be 100 percent and now it looks good i guess and let us give it a padding so yeah now it looks good padding is there so yeah now it i guess it is looking pretty much good right so yeah done next thing put the image on top of the top because on hover of the top the image opacity should be 0 0.8 right so a show a hover effect would be visible and background color give it text primary right now it is looking good so a hover effect is also there and the whole card is looking very nice so now coming back to most popular card so most popular we will be having our food card only so i will write product card and i will pass not category because we don't have category here so i will create a new uh, file in the cards that is product card dot jsx and now let us get started with this one before that import this one so it will be visible to us right so this is how the most popular is going to look like the card right i have kept it in that side so yeah let's get started so first thing import the style components and the whole thing would be a card then inside that we will be having our top section where the image is present and our menu item is present that is uh, first menu item would be let us change to capital m yeah so menu item is there and then we have the rating so rating and after this stop we have the, the details section that where we have the title say burger and then we have the description say burger description then we have pricing 
say 100 uh, rupees so default pricing and then we have a off also like the um, original cost so say 20 dollars and say we will be having a percentage of off so i will write percent of say 20 percent off right so we will be defining this uh, components now so let us define them first i will write const card equals to styled div i will now i will change the names top then image then menu then menu item then we have rate then we have rating then details then we have title then we have the description and the last we have the price perfect and last we have the percent also and we have the span also and rating would be imported from MUI so I will just import rating from material UI and now you can see the things are coming perfect but image and all the stuffs are not coming so for of now for the image I will just give a SRC from this burger itself I will copy and paste the URL and you can see that uh, image would be a styled image right so now it is coming right so now let us do the thing so for card width would be 300 pixel display flex and all the stuff and gap would be 16 pixel transition would be 0.3 is out and then top then image would be having a height of 300 pixel border radius and all the stuff for smaller screen size say 600 pixel we will define some other style that is uh, to make it responsive I will give a width of say 180 pixel and uh, image also will have a height of 180 pixel similar right now it is looking good so after that we will be having our top section that will be having display flex align item center position relative transition there would be a transition and the hover effect of black color right and uh, after that we will be having our uh, menu so in the menu you can see we are having say border radius 50 percent and width is 18 pixel so the position is absolute there index 10 and we have a color of text primary and top would be 14 right would be 14 display flex direction column and after that we have our uh, height as 18 pixel background as white padding would be 8 pixel then display flex and after that we will be having the icons also so let's define that thing so menu item is defined and after that we have the details so details would have a display flex gap 6 pixel flex direction column padding and then in the title we have font size 16 pixel font weight and color and then in the description we have the font size 16 font weight and then we have a wrapping of the text with the dot dot dots if it is more than one line and price would be 18 pixel font size and font weight 500 and color would be text primary and span also i have defined the style and after that uh, span would be of green color sorry uh, text decoration would be line through for the slice and yeah that's it pretty much looking good but we have to do one thing uh, for the rating we have to give bottom 8 pixel left 8 pixel padding of uh, this thing and opacity 0 0.9 mm, but we have to make it smaller right for smaller screen size so before that let us go with the menu items so for uh, top i will keep it after the menu and now we can define a hover effect on the top also so on hover of image and uh, menu we have some display flex and the, that thing so it is now looking good perfect so now in the rating we will give it a value of 3.5 and font size 14 pixel now it looks good right and uh, next thing that we have is menu items so in this menu items the first item that we will be having here is the favorite icon so i will add favorite uh, rounded i will give it uh, i will import this one from mui icons basically so font size 20 pixel by color would be red and after that uh, we have favorite rounded we have a shopping cart font size color 
and uh, shopping bag outlined yeah now it is looking good pretty much what we wanted on hover it is showing us right so yeah that's pretty much about the product card so almost our home page is completed right and it is looking really good so give it a thumbs up so now is our favorite page so in favorite page the very basic thing uh, we will be wrapping the whole thing in a container first of all so let us define the page first in the routes so favorite favorite and uh, we will be having our cart home done so now in favorite uh, we will be having a wrapping of the container and then we have the section and in section we have a title that is your favorites and then a card wrapper and then a, then then the products card basically right so i will add some more cards so that it will be visible to us now from the home i will copy the title and section and the container all of the stuff from home itself and if you reload it now you can see product card is not defined so i will import that one the products card so i have imported the products card and now you can see our favorite page is ready so that basic simple it is right so after that uh, favorite page is done so the next thing that we are going to build here is the let's see what is there so okay the next thing that we can build here is the food details page so let us define the food details page basically so it will be like product or you can say food slash id and that id is from props and we will define the food details page food details page params uh, so also we have the food listing it would be only food import the food listing from pages slash food listing food listing right so now if you reload this one and if you come to food it will be sorry it would be dishes instead of food it would be dishes now you can see food listing is coming right after this if you add anything then the food details page would be visible to us right so let us see so in the url if you add um, okay so First, let's get started with the food listing page itself. Then we will define the food details page, right? In the food listing page, we have a container, and where we have the filters uh, on the left side, which will be having some menu items. And inside this menu, we will be having the stuffs. But before that, on uh, on the side of the filters, we will be having our products, right? So products will have a card wrapper, and inside that products card will be present, right? So that is how our structure is and now let's import the style components and the product card. So now the style components and the product card are being uh, imported and uh, after that I will define all the uh, components then container and then I will change the names filters then menu then products then card wrapper then height 100% display flex then we will be having the align item center and max width and a padding right so we have a background also and if you reload it you can see that the products are coming right and then we have the filters also so in the filters i will give it a width of 230 pixel and some height and overflow and that stuff and then we have a menu also and then we have the products that is flex one height 70 percent padding okay and then we have a card wrapper now the home page coming to the home page i will copy the stuffs like container part and in the food listing container i will paste that only so now you can see it is good to go and uh, let us change its uh, flex direction as row and for smaller screen flex direction would be column perfect and then its width would be let us give it 700 pixel and uh, filters remove all the i will remove all the stuff 
only the padding would be there and the background color red would be there perfect and then i will give it a flex of one and max width i will give say 250 pixel is good right and uh, for smaller screen it would be having a hundred percent width right now it is looking good i guess so let us uh, go for the next thing that is our what is the next thing that is our card wrapper i will copy the card wrapper stuff and i will paste it here so now you can see the card wrapper is also perfect then for the products i will change its height and scroll and all the stuffs and i will only try keep it flex one and rest i will remove the stuff but keep a padding of 20 by 16 pixel in the filters after that uh, what we will do here is we will be uh, adding our menu items so in the menu items that we have here is first is filters dot map so filters is basically defined in our uh, utils so you can go through that so i will map the filters and there would be a filter section where we will be having the title of the each filters then we will pass the filter dot name that is title filter dot name const filter section equals to style dot div we will be having title we will be having our item we will be having we will be having our filter titles so give it filters yeah so you can see the two titles are there food category and filter by price right and then we will be having filters dot uh, value equal to equal to equal to price and we will give it a question mark and then we will pass slider and in this slider we will see like if uh, if the filter is filter value is equal to equal to equal to category we will check that one then we will pass item okay now for slider we will be giving a min max and uh, value level display auto and marks and the stuff and then we will be having our filter value category then we will have our item that is filters dot items dot map and then we will map this whole stuff in the selectable items and in the selectable items we will be having item i will change this to const selectable item equals to style dot div display flex flex direction column gap would be 16 pixel padding is 12 pixel title would be title and font size and then items display flex and uh, after that we will be having a minimum width of uh, max width of 300 pixel then we will be giving say max width of 400 pixel or 500 pixel looks good right so yeah 480 pixel looks good so this all this is also done and uh, selectable items we will give cursor pointer display would be flex and border would be one pixel and border radius would be eight pixel and padding would be two pixel by eight pixel and font size i will give 16 pixel both would be fit content and done right for selectable items i will uh, pass a selected right so it will be like if selected then this style would be coming right so that is how we can define the stuff and then our pages is done so our details page is done so now let's go to the details page food details page food listing page is done right so let's go to the food details page so for food details page uh, it is similar to what we have in our so before that let us do with the cart page sorry so in the cart page it is similar to our shopping cart page so i will just uh, go through that only so first we have a container and then we have a section of title that is your shopping cart and then we have uh, our wrapper inside that wrapper we have the left and the right so i will write left l and right r so const title and then const wrapper equals to style dot div and then font weight 
left right and its, its background will be blue display is flex and gap is 32 pixel and would be 100 percent now for the left what we will do here is flex one for both so you can see that both is equally divided but for smaller screen we won't be needing the uh, flex direction in that so we'll change the flex direction as column below 750 pixel right and then in the right uh, we will be having the flex as 0 0.8 and rest of the stuff the same now in the left section we will be having our table so in the table we will be having our table items that are product that are say products then we will be having price then we will be having our quantity and we will be having our subtotal and we will be having the final that is our delete button but we for that we have to need space right so also we will pass the props bold and flex so bold and let's define the table so const table equals to style dot div and uh, table item equals to style dot div perfect and we will pass the head as margin bottom 22 pixel uh, display flex table items we have now for the products that we have so we will remove the bold first of all and then price say $120 quantity say one subtotal say $120 $220 right quantity say two like that okay but uh, we will be having a counter also in the quantity plus and minus counter where we can increase or decrease the stuff right so let us define the counter so i will define counter const counter equals to style dot count and then we will be having the display flex gap 22 align item center border padding padding right now it is looking good and after that we will be having our product basically so for the product uh, so for the product let us define the product uh, then we have the inside that product we will be having an image and we will be having the details in these details we will be having the product title as title then we have the product description then we have the product size I will add const product equals to style.dev then const product uh, rest of the items so image then img then we have the details and then we have the product title then we have the product description product size then we have the product title and all the stuff perfect perfect right for now we are using this image now you can see that uh, the product is looking perfect and uh, rest of the thing we we'll, let's go with the right part so in the right part we will be having first thing is a uh, text that is a subtotal what is our main subtotal so i will write subtotal say subtotal of 120.90 then we will be having a delivery so delivery details const subtotal equals to style dot dev then after that we will be having our right section so subtotal i have added and then for the delivery also we will be adding font size font weight display and text direction column after that what we will be having here is our uh, delivery details we will be having the form right so i will define div inside that div we will be having our text input so i have to import that one so text input 
i will copy uh, so i will say import text input from dot slash component slash text input right and we also import the button perfect and then in the text input we will pass the first thing that is our small and placeholder would be first name and then the next would be small last name and in this div we will make it display flex and we will provide a gap gap of say six pixel okay and the next we will be having another text input it would be say your email address then we will be having a phone number and at the last we will be taking the so a complete address so that would be a text area and so i will change that to say complete address the placeholder and rows would be five perfect and uh, after that we will copy this and i will paste this for our payment section so instead of delivery so i will change it to payment details and now we will be having our card number so first would be card number then there is expiry date and then is a CVV expiry date and uh, CVV and we have the card holder name and I will remove this one perfect so after that we will be having a button so I will write button text would be say place order okay so now it is looking pretty much similar what we have and looking really nice right so yeah so next thing that we will be doing here is uh, this page is done right so now we will be adding the details page so that is product details right so in the products details page uh, I will add that one first so that would be product details that is shop slash ID or you can say for the food daily it would be say dishes slash ID that we have already implemented right so coming to the product details page so first thing that we will do here is I will wrap the whole thing in the container so I will do import styled I will add import style from style components then we will be having our container so this is how the product details page will be looking like so I will write the base as a container so we will be having container and then we will be having uh, a wrapper and then an image wrapper and then the details right so image and details and rest of the things are similar okay so yeah now let's just get started so in the container we will be having our wrapper first and in this wrapper we will be having our image wrapper and the details right so both are would be in place left and right so details that is d and image wrapper is i and then I will write the styles of all these things like container and the wrapper then for the image wrapper I will give display flex flex would be 1 and uh, for details of the flex would be 1 and I will give it a background red and background blue so it will be visible to us how it is going to appear right and after that uh, we will be uh, so this part is uh, cart part I will copy the wrapper and then I will paste the wrapper also here the same thing for uh, smaller screen the flex direction would be column that thing I have pasted here and after that as you can see uh, we can add a padding also so let us get started with the image wrapper first we have added a padding and then let us get started with the image wrapper inside image wrapper we will be having an image that is src and then we will be having our image wrapper as uh, do one thing we can do one thing that is we will define our image that is a style dot image and then we will provide the style for this image that is say height of 600 pixel border radius of 12 pixel right and image wrapper would be having display flex and align item center and justify content center perfect now it is looking perfect right now after this uh, 
we will be having an image of say height of auto height would be 300 pixel border radius is 12 pixel height is say 200 pixel for smaller screen uh, let's make it to 300 yeah now it is good right now after that uh, the next thing that comes out here is the uh, let us make it 400 400 looks good right so yeah next thing that comes out here is the details part right so i will write the detail styling gap flex direction padding and flex and i will i have removed the blue color and then in these details we have the first thing is title that is a title then we have description before description we have a name then we have the rating then we have the rating so rating would be a uh, imported from mui so rating its value would be 3.5 and after that we will be having our price so i will define the price 12 dollar then we will be having a span of say 120 by 200 and then we will be having a percentage of 40 percent of and the description i will add a product description and a title of cons title equals to style dot dev and a description of name and price and uh, after that we have the percent right so this is done I, ha I will be like writing the styles of this stuff of our details page and after that span and text secondary and percent font size font weight is given and a price perfect right so now it is looking perfect then uh, after that we will be adding our sizes so now for full daily what the thing would be so in image you can add any of the image so i will add a burger image if you reload that it will be coming so yeah now it is like that and uh, so image let us give it a 300 pixel now it is good or you can give 400 also for a smaller screen i will give the image say media max with 768 pixel perfect right and the height would be 400 pixel and object fit would be cover Uh, now you can see the cart page would look like this and you can change this picture also in the cart and if i do dishes slash id you will come back to this page now in this page we will be having some other stuffs that are basically our ingredients so i will write ingredients and in this ingredients we will be having ingredients say items say item ingredient one ingredient two const ingredients uh, equals to styled dot dev it will be having uh, ingredients items and it will be having the item as uh, the let us do the style so font size would be 16 pixel then we will be having a font weight of 500 and give a display flex done and items uh, item is done 
so background and color is given so now it is looking pretty much good and we will be giving a border radius and rest of the stuff so that it looks perfect right what we want this is done give it a gap of say 18 pixel or 24 pixel now after this thing uh, the next thing that we have here is uh, coming to the home page we will be copying the container from this home page and i will paste that come in this container i will remove the padding to 16 pixel now you can see it is pretty much good and give it zero pixel and the main padding also you can change if you want but it is looking good and in the wrapper i will give it a width of 100 percent now it is looking good right and padding say give it 16 pixel and after that uh, this ingredients what the else we will be having here is our button container button wrapper you can say in this button wrapper we will be having the buttons the first button would be text would be add to cart and then we will be having full outline and uh, const button wrapper equals to style dot div display would be flex gap would be 16 pixel right and then padding 32 by 0 pixel and media screen only max width. so 12 pixel by 0 pixel done so padding would be 16 by 0 and padding would be 32 done perfect and uh, button text would be add to cart outline right and this is done so for the button wrapper make it uh, flex direction remove that one and we will be having the same button by now and it would be not outlined and we will, it will be changed to order now and we have uh, last one that it that would be a uh, left icon it will be having a left icon and left icon would be a favorite round favorite rounded sx would be uh, font size would be like say 22 pixel and the color would be red right and it is looking good now if you reload it you can see it is looking good right so this is basically our food details page how it is going to look like and it is pretty much responsive also so i think like we are being completed with the front end now we are going to build the back end of this application so give it a thumbs up till now if you have liked the stuff right and don't forget to subscribe the channel so let's get started with the back end so this is all the front end stuff and now we will be linking with the back end part of this one right uh, before that we will be giving a max height of 500 pixel for the image so yeah now it is looking good and uh, rest of the things are pretty much good right uh, so yeah let's close all the stuff and let's get started with the back end integration right so i will close the client now so now coming back to the server part so yeah so in the server the first thing is we have installed all our dependencies so that we have got right so now the next thing in the server that comes out here is mongodb url so you have to connect your mongodb basically so for that case what you have to do here is you have to get a database in your mongodb and then you have to get the url of that so open your mongodb and you can log in or sign up anything you can do and after that you can create a new project in the mongodb and once you create a new project there would be cluster so you have to connect your cluster basically so you can see like uh, the mongodb is opening so in the env create a dot env file before that in the server and then uh, you have to add the mongodb url and also you have to add the index.js file so you can also do the open index .js, create index.js file so now you can see my mongodb is open so i have done google authentication and after that uh, you will see that you can create your new project basically using the uh, mongodb atlas and then you will give, you will be getting that url okay and then you have to paste that url here and you have to upgrade the password also and after that come back to package.json file you have to you have to do type is module okay so the type would be module and once this is done add a script also that is a start command so on start it will be running node mon index.js right so you have to add that one now package.json is completed now let's get started with the index.js file right so 
In index.js file, the first thing that we have to do here is const app equals to express. We are defining our application backend server. So I have imported express and after that our app uh, will be using cores. So I will write app.use cores. Then we will be using app.use uh, express and then we have to add a JSON limit. So I will write JSON limit uh, 500 MB maximum. Then I will be using app.use express and I have to do URL encode true. So I will write extended true. And uh, yeah, this is the basic setup in every uh, backend server you have to do. Now getting started with the application route. So first is app.get asynchronous function request and response so in this it will be uh, sending the response status as 200 and it will uh, show a message so i will pass json message and i will write hello gfg developers right so whenever you will be opening this url so this message will pop up and that means our server is live right so next the thing we have to do is starting the server so i will write asynchronous function the start server now put that in try and catch so in try i will write app.listen8080 and console.log i will write server started at port 8080 okay in catch i will take the error and i will just simply do next error or you can do console.log error not next error console.log error and uh, now we will call this function basically so whenever index.js file is called this function will be getting called okay so that is how we write our application and start our server so i will simply go in the server and then i will write npm start so you can see that server started at 8080 you can see that it is running and if you open the url in the chrome you can see that message hello gfg developers that means our server is live right now next thing we have to do here is we have to connect our database that is mongodb database so i will write asynchronous function that connect database and then i will write mongoose.connect and then I will pass the uh, mongodb url process.env.mongodb uh, url that we have we have to pass that one and uh, configure our .env so I will write import start as .env from .env and uh, I will write a dot then and in this then we will pass console.log connected to the mongodb okay so this is how basically we do the thing and then we will add a catch also so in catch uh, what we will pass here is uh, fail to connect to the mongodb and console.log error so now let us do mongoose.set strict query true you can add this one and this is done now let's call this uh, function mongodb connect okay connect db and now it will be uh, you can see that uh, let us configure the dot env and now let us see you can see that connected to mongodb is coming right so that is how we have connected with our mongodb database and we have started our server now the make next thing is that our creating the folder structure so there are mainly three important uh, structure that we have that are the models that are controllers and the third one is the routes basically so you need to make this folders and you will be having also error.js files so basically in error.js file you have const create error and then express.url encoded extended is true now in this error handler is there so here you have to do app.use error request response next equals to now you have to do the const uh, status equals to error or status 500 okay and then const message equals to error dot message and you have to pass the response if you want you can do that one and then simply do return response dot status and then pass the message status and then json and the json pass success false and then pass the message or you can do the status and then pass the message like that you can pass your data uh, error handling part right so this is done now the models what are models models are basically our schemas of each and every object that we will be having so first is the food uh, model we will be doing so i have read, made a file food.js and then we will be having users also so i will write user.js and we will be having order so like order.js so these are the things that we are going to have and in the controllers also we will be having user and food so i have written user and food and then routes also you will be having food and user so routes are basically used for the url and connecting the controllers to that 
basically the API routes and then you have the models for schema and controllers are the main function wh which performs the database transaction. Now user.js come to the user model. So I will import mongoose and then I will create the user schema. So I will write new mongoose schema. Then first thing that we have for the user is the attribute name. So I have written name type is string and required is true. Then we will be having unique and then we will write false name can't be unique but email id will be unique so in this case i will write uh, same thing but unique would be true perfect and then we have the password then we will pass type string required true then we have the image then we will set uh, this one to type string default would be null and the last thing that we will be having here is uh, our timestamp so i will pass timestamp true perfect so now this is done so the next thing we will export this one so i will write export default mongoose dot model and in this model i will pass user and user schema and i will copy this one and i will do the same for the food also so we will be having the similar kind so i will just change the name to food schema then i will change the attributes so name would be there description will be there i will remove password there would be the image will be there and there would be the price so price structure would be like uh, a multiple object so price inside price the type would be object so in that object we have original price so type would be number and default would be 0, 0.0 then you have the mrp and the discount and uh, then you can add a default of uh, original as 0, 0.0 and mrp as 0, 0.0 and off as 0 and after that we will be having category and inside this category we will be having our type string then we will be having our default uh, as a array of string and then we have ingredients that is also an array of string so it will be having type of uh, so it will be having the type of string and then required would be true perfect so yeah that's the ingredients and the category now in mongoose.model pass the food we will change that to food because our model uh, database would be named as food and then for the orders i have pasted the same thing and then i will change the database name and the schema name i will change the database name to orders and uh, then after that we will be having in orders the total amount of the bill then it would be type number then we will be having the address type string required true and then we will be having the image we don't require we don't require price ingredients and last thing we need the status you can give it normal string and by default you can give it payment done anything you can give but this is a basic default thing so these are the main thing that we have in our orders also and the next is connecting the relation of the user with the orders so orders are for user right so we have to add user and its type will be object mongoose.types.object id and we have to pass the reference of the collection that is user and it is required to also we need to have add the products also because products will be also linked here right so in the products what we will do here is type uh, of uh, array of objects so in the array of objects you will be having product so and you will be having quantity now quantity would be type number and product would be a uh, type of mongoose dot object dot id schema dot object id and uh, it will be required true and reference would be food so that is how you collect uh, basically uh, the connection of the database to the model relation we are doing here right so this is how we link up with each of the collection or you can say schemas and then you, in the user you will be having the favorites and the cart option right so i will add favorite that would be a uh, type of array uh, which will be containing the object id of each of the food items so it will be mongoose.schema.type.object id and reference would be food and default would be uh, empty and we will be having our cart also so in the cart what we will do here is uh card type would be this one same mongo schema object id and default quantity would be there and default would be empty so this is similar to the order also like right so our model is now done now the next thing that we are going to get started is the user controller right so in the user controller the first thing is the authentication that we have to perform 
so first i will paste all the necessary imports that are required so dot in will be crypt jwt user orders etc and after that i will write dot env dot config and then i will export the const user register equals to async then request and response i will pass and next i will pass which will be having try and catch block so for every controller we will be having the same thing try and catch block and then the catch block i will pass next error uh, if any error occurs and in the try block first thing we are going to get here is email password name and image from our request.body so in json format someone pass the payload and then we will be getting that one from request.body so we will be having the next check for the existing user if the email is already registered right so i will check existing user equals to await user dot find one and i will pass the email and uh, i will check that the, if the user exists so i will write if existing user then i will pass a message that is return re next error create error that 409 a user already exists or email address is already in use right so this is how basically you can add the authentication that if the user is already registered or not then we will be having if he is not registered then we have to hash the uh, password that we have given using bcrypt salt so i will write const salt equal to bcrypt get salt async 10 then i will write const hash password equals to bcrypt and then i will do hash sync then i will pass the password and i will pass the salt so in this hash password we will be having a password mix up which will be hashed now i will create a new user so i will write const user equals to new user email address name and password would be hashed password and image right and uh, yeah so now our user is created now we have to save it to our database so i will write const created user equals to await user dot save so now the user would be getting saved now we have to generate a token with the id of the user that is being generated so i will pass const token equals to jwt dot sign created user underscore id and process dot env dot jwt you have to pass this process dot env dot in the jwt you can give any string and then i will write expired in 9999 years so you can give anything you want and now i will return the response with the status of 201 you can say or 201 and then i will pass them json as the token and the created user or you can say user right so this is how basically we have been completed with the registered user controller so this is basically our sign up controller okay and uh, after that uh, the next thing that we are going to do here is we are going to add this in our routes basically so that we can access the controller right so in the routes first thing we will do here is import express from express then we will do here is uh, const uh, router equals to express route express dot router and then i will just uh, define our routes so router dot post first one would be slash sign up so for sign up we will be having this route and then i will call the user register controller basically from our controller and then we have also the sign in but we have not yet made so i have commented that one so yeah the next thing that we will be having here is so let us just test this one once so if you do sign up so let us do the sign up you can see uh, okay so user register so email is already in use as you can see and if you change the email address then you can see a new user is being created right so that is how basically we add our controllers and the next thing after this one that we have to do is the same thing for user sign up so i will simply do user login and then we need only the email and password for user sign up so after that we will do user and dot uh, if user is already existing then i will pass uh, user uh, not found if he does not exist and then i will check if the password is correct or not if the password is correct then we will generate a new token and pass that one and if the password is not correct we will send the message right so first i will check const is password correct equals to await bcrypt.compare sync password and is password correct so we are comparing that one both the password and then we will check if password is correct then i will return uh, is incorrect then i will return incorrect password and if not then i will create a new user uh, token using the jwt and i will pass that one 
So let us uh, add this route and let's just check. It would be user login. So in the login, let us just say. So there are some errors. So first thing is password correct. Okay, so they are not properties of. So first thing would be not user, user not found, and then if you give uh, the correct email address, data and hash arguments are required. This uh, would be user. Let us see. Okay, I got it. This one would be user dot password, right? So yeah, that we have made a mistake. Now you can see incorrect password, and if you give the correct password, your token is generated and user is sent, right? So that is how we have made the two controllers and APIs: sign up and sign in, right? Next is creating the food controllers. So in the food controllers, you will be having the first one is adding the product. So the same thing, try and catch block, and if any error occurs, we will pass in next error. Uh, now in the try uh, we will be getting the food data first of all and now we will check that if it is an array or not and if it is not an array I will pass that invalid request and now I will create an array which I will be passing in the uh, response and so I have let create food created foods equals to empty array then I will run a loop of all the foods that are present and then I will take the name description image ingredients category of each of the food and then i will create a new food uh, with the name description price category ingredients and then i will be saving that one cons created food equals to saving that one and once it is saved i will push that in my array that i have created right so i will pass this array as a response okay so after that i will send this one product created successfully and i will pass this array so this is how we have created the adding new foods right so yeah this one is also done so let us add the routes of this one so for that come to the food routes i have pasted the same then i will change the name uh, that is add and write add products and i will comment this one and coming to the index.js same thing i will do food routes food routes and i will import this food routes from food.js and now i will now i have a food so let us see yeah so you can see food added product added successfully like that you can do the thing so now our food route adding the food is done now we have to do the get food right so we will be making the phone controller that get food items i will be adding a try and catch block again inside this so in this next error and then the try block first thing that we are going to do here is we will be taking the queries say categories minimum price maximum price ingredients and search and then we will split the ingredients and categories in two parts because the ingredients and categories are basically a array so then we will be adding an empty filter object and then in that object we will be first checking that if categories is an array then i will add filters or category equals to in categories then filters or ingredients equals to in ingredients and then i will check if max price or minimum price is given so i will first do filter is price dot original is an empty array empty object then inside that empty object we will check price dot original greater than max price uh, min price and less than max price and then for search also we have added or filter dot or and title and description in regex okay so that is how basically you can add a complete filter of your application of the database and then we will be passing the response so we will simply take food.find with filter and then i will pass that one now let us create the routes for that so i will write router.get and in simple slash we don't be adding anything i will call that one now if you uh, call api slash food you can see all the items are coming now you can add your queries also here so i will write say max price equals to 400 max price equals to 400 sorry minimum price would be 400 so none of the products should come yeah now it is working right so 200 is minimum price and some products are coming so like that you can add your products uh, queries right so this is done now our next thing that we have is uh, getting each product by their id right so if you open a details page so there would be the details of the product so that a controller we have to make that get food by id so we will be having same thing the try and catch block and then inside this try block 
first thing is we will be taking the id as the params from the params and then i will check that if it is a valid id or not then i will pass invalid product id if not valid and then i will take the food that is i will find that one from by id and then i will check if food is found then okay and if not then i will pass food not found and if it is found i will pass the return response status 200 and json and food so it will pass the food details itself so now all the food controllers are basically completed so we have only three controllers for of now that is the searching and getting all the food items and getting food by id and adding the food so right so i will add the routes also so router.get and params is colon id we have to do like that and get food by id and like that we have done so after that we will be like doing the add to cart for user so now for user i will be adding a try and catch so try catch block and then i will add a next error and now i will check const foo product id and quantity equals to request dot body and const jwt equals to request dot user and const user equals to await user and this is how basically we will be checking that if user exists or not and we will check that uh, if the product is already existing in the cart or not if it is already existing then i will increase uh, i will uh, increase its quantity and if it is not then i will add that one and i will save that one and i will pass that as a response that product is added to the cart right so that is basically how we will be doing with this one and then we will be adding our routes so before that we have to create a middleware basically where we will be checking the user verification so i will add verify user in the middleware.js file and then uh, there i will be importing first all the things that are the jwt and the create error message and then we will be having export const verify token where i will be adding a try and catch block and if any error occurs then i will pass that next error and after that thing we will be having our authorization we will check that if request dot headers the authorization is not present i will pass you are not authenticated then i will check the token first that request dot headers dot authorization i will split that in two parts then i will check if the token uh, then i will return you are not authenticated and i will decode that one and i will save that in our request dot user which we are going to use here right so that is how the thing will be working that is how my middleware works so in the routes we have added that one and after that we have to add this one so first thing we will do here is router dot uh, this would be a post method and we will slash say slash cart and we have to pass the middleware first so i will write verify token and then i will write add to cart controller so let us import the middleware verify token from dot dot slash middleware slash verify user and now if you run in your postman so we have to pass the product id and the quantity so product id is here quantity you have to add so you can see invalid signature then authorization pass the jwt that you have got so let us see user validation card zero is quantity okay so quantity you have to provide quantity let us give say zero by default it is one so let us give the quantity zero and see so now you can see the product added to your cart successfully right and see you can see the quantity is something and uh, the thing is done perfectly so adding to cart is done now the in the same manner we will be doing the remove from cart uh, controller also so i will do here is i will write export const remove from cart then the same try catch block and in this try catch block we will be having the same functionality say first would be i will be getting product id and the quantity and then i will write user jwt and i will be getting the user and then i will finding if the user exists or not and then we will be doing the basic validation and after that using the product id and quantity first i will get the product index and i will check that from user cart if that product id is present and it is quantity is greater than zero then i will decrease the quantity and if the quantity is uh, equal to equal to zero after decreasing then i will remove that one entirely okay so that logic i have written here basically and after that we will be doing and if it is not found then i will simply remove that one okay and i will save this one and in the else part uh, that if the product index is not found so in that case i will send the message that product is not found in the cart right 
so that is how we will be performing this remove functionality after that we have the next thing that is the get all cart items so it will be asynchronous function again the same thing try catch block and in this we will be passing the next header and then we will be having const user jwt equals to request dot user and then i will say const user equals to await user dot find by id then i will populate this one and then i will get the cart items user dot cart then I will say return response status 200 JSON cart items. So like that we will be performing the thing and then we will be having export const place order equals to async next request next and then we will be having our same thing in place order we will be taking the products address and the total amount and then we will be having our request body then we will be performing the task right. So we will be creating a new order so with the product with the user and total amount and address and then i will save that in our database and i will simply empty the cart of the user and i will save the user also and then i will simply pass that one uh, that order plays successfully okay so now to get the orders i will write get all orders so this is very basic getting all the orders so i will uh, do the same try catch and in the try the our logic would be like getting the product id then i will be getting product id it would be the user id so product id is not required and then getting the user id then checking the sorry let me see okay so this controller is for adding to favorite basically we made a mistake so this is orders and then it is cart so this one is authentication and the next thing that we are going to build up here is favorites part so in the favorites the first thing that we will be doing is remove from favorites so i will write a try catch and then in the error i will write next error and then in the try block we will be adding const product id and then we will be getting the user and the same thing the same process we will be checking if the user exists or not and then if the user exists then i will simply add that one to favorites the product id and then i will simply save the user and i will pass that uh, product remove from the user successfully basically if the favorite is not found then i will remove that one right so that is the logic and adding to favorite the similar logic would be there simple try catch block the same thing you can paste it from the remove one so and then i will uh, say the product id we will get then i will do the same authentication if the user exists or not and if the user exists so in that case we will be like includes if like say if does not include then i will simply push and save the user and then i will simply pass the user right so that is how basically we are going to work now the next thing that after these two controllers are our cart and favorites and all are done so the next thing is get all the favorites of the user so i will write try catch again and then in this one I will simply uh, we are going to populate the user so first thing i will check the user details i will check if user exists or not and then i will simply populate that one so you can see i have done found by id and then populated with favorites so the favorite would be populated and then const favorite product equals to user dot favorite and i have just returned the favorite products right so that is how basically we have completed all our routes so now the next thing that is we just uh, all our controllers now the next thing is we just add all the routes of them so first one is for the cart so post get and patch so add to cart get all cart items and remove from cart so the next one would be the favorite so add to favorite get all favorites get all favorites get user favorites and then remove from favorites uh, so this would be favorite and the last one would be for the orders so i will copy and paste that thing and i will change the name to order and then this would be order and then i will write verify token and then we will pass place order and then get all orders get all orders right so this is basically we have defined all our routes and now our backend is done so now the next thing that we are going to do here is some implementing our backend server with our front end basically using the apis right so first thing uh, let us open this application and now create a new folder api where you create an index.js file where we will be defining all our api urls with axios first i will import the axios and the next thing is i will write const api equals to axios.create and i will add the base url which would be http say 
local host 8080 for of now and slash api slash and now i will define all the functions so first one would be con export const user signer which will be asynchronous function i will take data as a props and then i will write await api dot post that would be slash user slash sign up and i will pass the data similar thing would be for the uh, same thing would be for the user sign in also so i will just uh, copy paste this one so i will copy paste i will change it to sign in and just change the api url to sign in okay so the similar thing this is the user sign in sign up then next thing we have the const uh, get all products so this will be having asynchronous filter and then we will be having a weight of api dot get that would be a get method and then there would be a food and then we can pass our query that is filter and this filter we will be taking as a props okay and after that we will be going for the next thing that we have that is uh, get product details so in product details i will take id and then i will pass the id api dot get that id okay and the next thing that we will be having here is uh, get cart so we will be getting all the cart items that the current user has so i will simply we have to pass the token to our backend right so like this you have to pass the token headers authorization bearer token right and then we will be having add to cart also like the same way the methods will be getting changed so i will copy and paste now all the cart and i will just write favorites so next thing is favorites i will just copy and paste it so this is user.get favorite then we have uh, post favorite that is basically add to favorite and then we have delete from favorite that is api.patch user favorite and then we will write a place order so authorization bearer token place order right and then we have the get orders so now we have added all our api's functions that we have so these are all the arrow functions now the next thing that we will be having to do we are going to do is the uh, integrating this functionalities right so i have just commented down which is what and then we will be using this api so first thing is going to the home page right so this is our main page so in the home page that first thing we will do here is we will call the api get all products right so first thing let us uh, create a uh, use state hooks that is loading and set loading it would be a use state by default it would be false okay so whenever it will be loading i will change it to loading and whenever it is not then i will change that to not loading then i will add const product and set products then i will write equals to use state so this is another use state which will be having all the products array of all the products the next thing we have the const get products is equal to asynchronous function and in this asynchronous function we will be first setting the loading as true and then i will call the api that is await get all products api and then i will check that if the response comes then i will set the products to the response dot data perfect and then i will set the loading as false like that we will be using our api functions so whenever it is called it will be loading and whenever it is done it the loading would stop and we can see the products right so i will import the get all products api and after that uh, the next thing that we will do here is um, i will write use effect function and then we will be having in the use effect get uh, products so in get products call the get products and then we will be having a use effect right so whenever the page is loaded it this function will be called right now we have to uh, map the loading and the cards so first i will check if loading is there then i will uh, show a circular progress bar instead of a card wrapper and if it is uh, loaded is completed then i will uh, show the uh, food items right so i will write uh, instead of categories dot map i will change that to products dot map then i will change this one to product and then i will uh, change this to product is equal to product and i will pass the product card as a props right now in the product card just open this one and you can see that uh, this is static right so we have to implement the uh, props here so first thing is image so image would be product dot image so now you can see the images are coming of the products uh, the next thing is uh, the details we can go for the details also 
so let's go for the details so we will write title as uh, is our uh, products dot title or you can say name then we have the description as product dot description then we will be having our price so we can write uh, products dot price dot original price then we have the discounted price that would be product dot price dot mrp and uh, percentage would be 20 percent off say so for that we will can write that products dot price dot off percentage off right so yeah that's it basically how we have implemented our card functionality but we will be requiring the uh, favorite and the shopping bag item also functional so first thing let us define the use state hooks favorite and favorite loading so whenever it is loading i can say that favorite loading and the state that is favorite or not that we can set through this favorite hook then i will uh, create the functions that is add favorite or you can say what of now let us just uh, go for the sign up and sign in first or else it won't be working right so in the sign up uh, let us go for the sign up so in sign up let us do the thing i will be creating redux basically we are using redux in our backend so uh, for in react js for managing the state not in backend so redux is basically used for state management you can go through their docs also uh, so yeah now let's get started with the redux so create a folder redux and then inside that we will be having our reducers and what a reducer reducer are basically the slice that we are going to create first one would be the user slice.js and also you can create a snack bar so i will go with the snack bar and user slice you can create any of the any other slices that you want and now also in the redux folder we will be having another file store.js okay so snack bar uh, sorry the slice are basically having all the functionalities and the default value which will be stored in the store so first in the user slice i will write import of the create slice then i will uh, initialize the i will write the initial state that is const initial state is none for the user and after that i will be uh, exporting export const user slice equals to create new slice where we will be having our name as user and then initial state and then we have the reducers and in reducer we have the updated uh, update user we will be having the state and action and we will be having that uh, state as state dot current user equals to actions dot play payload and payload dot user and lo login success we can have state as action and we can have that one as state dot current user and the current user equals to action dot payload dot user okay done and local storage uh, dot set items so yeah done now this is done right so reducers are done so this we will be having two reducer update user login user and we will be having logout also so in login you have to store the token basically in your local storage and we have to in logout we have to remove that one from our local storage so we will be taking the state again and then in the state dot current i will set user as null and then i will remove the token from the local storage okay so i will write remove food okay food token and then i will have a reload and then in this reload we can add something but we don't need the reload actually so you can write state dot reload equals to not state dot reload and uh, we don't need this one but you can use your reload functionality here also like that and now the next thing that we will be having out here is uh, exporting this uh, thing so i will write export const update user then login success and then logout as a form of user slice user slice dot reducer sorry the action and i can export the whole as a default as user slice dot reducer now coming to the snack bar slice i will be having the same thing the initial state of the snack bar slice we will be having three parts that is open true or false we have the cvrt and the message i will write message and cvrt by default let us give it success so snack bar is basically used for the toast messages so now i will define the slice so create the slice 
so con snack bar equals to create slice then i will add a name snack bar then i have initial state then we have the reducers in this reducer we will be having two functions that has open snack bar and the close snack bar i will take state and action and then i will simply go open state dot open and i will set it true and then we have state dot message i will set it action dot payload dot message and then we have state dot uh, cvrt we will be adding action dot payload dot cvrt so there is an error so this won't be having yeah now it is good give semicolons yeah and for the close snack bar we will be having the same state simply change the open to false then we will be doing the same thing we will export the whole and after that we will be uh, exporting the snack bar actions then i will export it as default also as a snack bar dot reducer perfect then we will be going for the store now to set the store first thing that we will do here is we will import all the things that are required you can simply import it or you can get it from my github also so we have to import all this stuff and then we will be now doing the uh defining the persist or config so i will define the key equals root version one and storage and you have to define the root root reducer also that is user re user reducer and snack bar reducer and then persisted reducer so i will have persist reducer and then we have to add persist config and in this persist reducer uh, let me think so do one thing export the store first then configure store and then we will be having our reducer as persist config persist reducer and we will be having a middleware also so you get middleware first we will get the default middleware and then we will set the get middleware get default middleware as a set default set a serializable check and i will ignore some of the actions like flush flop that we have imported basically we will paste that one here okay so we, that is basically how you define your stores and how all the things will be saved now i will export the persister equals to persister like that persister store and i will pass the store here right so we have completed with our redux but we have to add the redux in our root let me see some error is there persisted reducer it will be persisted so in the reducer it will be persisted reducer yeah now it is correct so now we have to uh, add this in your root so first i will go in the index.js and now in the uh, before the app we will be adding the pers provider and we will pass the we will be adding provider and we will pass the persister also persister gate and inside there we will be having our application so in the provider um, first let us import the provider and persist gate and store and persister so in provider pass the store equals to store and in persister gate pass persister equals to persister like that right so done and now if you reload this thing there are some issues i can see okay so the import would be import is correct so in the okay okay so in the store the u and s would be capital i guess yeah user slice and snack bar slice yeah now i think it is correct yeah now you can see the thing is reloaded and perfect so now our uh, redux is done now we can go for the sign up first so in the sign up the simply the first thing that we will be doing is the loading state and we will be having our um, two mode use state that is the email and the password so i will write const first one is loading and set loading equals to use state hook equals to use state that is by default false and then we have the email and password so i will change this one to e button also we have the button disabled and button loading so button disabled then we have the email password use state uh, email and then we have our password use state password yeah so now this is done so the now the next thing that we have here is 
our validation of the input so i will check that if the email and password are validated or not so i will check that one and now i will take the input also so i will in the text input i will pass value as email and password value as password and i will add a handle change so in handle change what I will do here is I will take e and then I will set the email as e dot target dot value, right? So for the same as for the input for the password and I will change the value to password instead of uh, email, right? And in the button I will add a. Now you can see we can write the text and it is coming. We can add a on click. So in on click we will add handle sign in and is loading and I will set is loading as loading. And on click I will do handle sign in and is disabled disabled button disabled right now let us define the handle sign in function so I will write const handle sign in a asynchronous uh, arrow function now in this arrow function first thing we will do here is the, I will set the loading as true and after that I will set the button disabled as true I will check if validated inputs I will check that if the await has user dot sign in I will call the function if validated then i will say that await user sign in and then i will pass the request and then i will pass as user dot uh, first thing we will do the uh, then and catch and then if it is successful so what we will do is i will set the loading as false and disabled as false same for the error also but before that thing we have to do one thing we have to make it dispatch basically in the redux that uh, login success that we have created right so I will import use dispatch from react redux and then we will be having uh, user sign in also so I will import the user sign up also sign in also from our react so from our api sorry and then we will be having the dispatch of loading success loading success would be uh, response dot data we have to pass now let us import the loading success before that i will add one more dispatch as open snack bar and i will say login successful so i will write login success and cvrt would be success now let us import this both the uh, login success and the open snack bar so i have imported them and now it is time but some use dispatch is uh, showing the error but before that let us take the open auth as a prop and i will set the open auth as false so if you logged in then the open authentication that model would be removed same for the error i will just paste the snack bar and now let us reload and see so the dispatch is uh, showing some error let us see the error okay so it would be like imported from the react redux so now the error is gone right so if you now do sign in let us see i will give my email address i will give my password and let us do the sign in so now you can see the model is closing right so that means our application is running perfectly fine our api is also working same i will do for sign up i will simply just paste all the stuff here the same thing we have but only one extra thing that is name would be present and the next thing that we will be having here is uh importing all the stuff that we will be using the api and all and then we will be adding our uh, text input the value and the on change functionality so i will uh, add that things so value email handle change set email and the same thing that we do it for in the sign in and after that in the button click also we will be having the same thing now let's define the validation and the sign up function so validation input the same thing i have pasted and in the handle sign up function we will be having the same thing like set loading true button disabled and then if validated inputs and i will if it is validated inputs i will call the api that i will say await user sign up name email password and then i will simply do uh, dispatch login success data response to data then i will do a dispatch and then open snack bar message would be sign up dot true so yeah now in the catch function uh, we will be passing the simple thing that error and the rest of the things will be same so now it is done basically sign up and sign in so let us change the this import function and i guess now this would uh, this would work so let us do a sign up first full name give a full name then give an email address you can give any email address and then you can add your password and simply you can do sign up yeah now you can see that you, you are also signing up right so this is perfectly working fine the next thing that is for the navigation part that we are going to do so in the navigation part uh, first thing uh, we will be having our current user so i will open the app.js file 
and then I will open our uh, use selector so use selector we have to import that from react redux and then we have our current user and state is state dot user and then now I will pass the current user and that one before that let us uh, yeah now let us pass the current user in the navigation in the navbar so in the current user open the navbar and I will take that as a props and then uh, after taking this as a props what we will be doing here is uh, we have taken this one as a props then current user then user and then I will check if user is present then we will be showing the avatar basically and the mobile icon also so I will pass avatar and in the avatar we will be also passing a logout button so I will write logout so you can see that current user is present so that is coming so that would be a text button logout so logout and after that uh, logout is done so yeah now you can see that logout is also done i have added the text button text align end and cursor pointer and all those stuff so now uh, do one thing we will be having the logout button in the in the that tab uh, in that menu application menu bar if user is current user is present so because that would be better so in navigation items i will have one more avatar current user equals to I will pass the image if the image is present then i will pass the image and if not then i will pass the current user dot name but zero the first uh, letter would be shown right so that is how we have defined our avatar also now the next thing that we are going to do here is i will check if the current user is present we will show the logout and the uh, sign up sign in would be in the uh, other part that is you can say and now i will wrap the avatar and the text button a bigger screen right so if you open the bigger screen so that thing would be shown so now it is perfect let's remove the avatar from here only logout would be good and for this one so for the search bar and favorite add to cart so this one i will add the logout current user if current user is not present then i will uh, show that part and uh, yeah so basically this is the ternary condition that we are providing the current user if it is present then we will be showing the avatar and if not then uh, show the uh, login and sign up functionality right so let us open it in bigger screen so you can see now only the uh, thing is coming but we need to show the uh, favorite and the shopping cart instead so there would be a text button also login and uh, the next thing we will cut from we will cut the next thing on navbar is done basically right so now you can see it is perfect so now the next thing that we are going to do here is uh, one thing that we missed out in the navbar is uh, in the logout button we will be adding the functionality of logging out so i will simply call the dispatch in the same way i will call the logout from the user slice right so let us first define the dispatch i will write dispatch equals to use dispatch then i will import that one the dispatch and the logout user slice right so you would be capital okay done so this one is perfectly done and i will also add this logout in other buttons also that we have logout buttons and now it is perfect i guess yeah now coming back to the pages so the first page that we have is home right so now the next thing that we have here is favorites page so let us just go for the favorite page so you can see that favorite page we will be having a simple thing we will be calling the api and then we will show the products that we have in a favorite so i will have the two states the same thing loading and set loading we have the products that is products and set products then we have the get products we will check uh, get favorite then we will be having our import uh, the api from we will be importing the api and after that we will be having that api in the use effect so in the use effect i will be calling that one and i will set the loading as uh, circular loading circular progress and i will check that if it is not loading state i will pass the uh, 
card wrapper inside that card wrapper i will check if it is not loading then i will get the products and i will simply map that products basically so the same thing we are doing in every case right so yeah that is how we are going to work actually so now in the products card i will pass the product and i will product now done so this is basically our favorite page and it is simple and it is completed so if you open your favorite page you can see the items that are in your favorites right so next thing that we have after this favorite page is our uh, food listing page right so this one is a little complex because we have all the filters right so yeah the uh, we will be having the same thing like the products getting all the products but we have a filter option so first thing let us define the use states and the uh, hooks basically so loading products price range and selected categories right and uh, after this we will be having the api calling function so that is get filtered products and the api is get all products and i have added a filter option that if the length is zero then i will set the filter and if not then we won't be showing the filters right so that is the thing we have done let us import all those things so get all products from dot slash dot slash api so yeah that is imported right now it is good to go now we will call that in use effect whenever the price would be changing and the selected categories are going to change we will call this api right and now let us map this whole thing so in the slider i will set the default value as price range and uh, after that we will do a on change where e and i will take new value and i will set the price range as a new value like that and after that we have the selected items also so you can see the price is now changing and for the selected items what we will do here is uh, we will set it selected uh, whenever someone is clicking on that so i will set the selected equals to selected categories when it is included in our selected categories then only i will make it selected and we will add on click functionality but if you click on this it will be added right and if it is already added it will be removed like that right the ternary operator function okay so yeah now you can see that this is being selectable and now the next thing is the our showing the card items right so i will set a loading first so the same thing that we did in the favorite so the same way i will uh, show a circular progress bar if it is loading and if not then i will show the products means i will map the products basically so i will map the products then i will do products card and i will pass the product now you can see that if you are uh, adding the filters the price range is if it is increased the things are coming perfectly fine right so that is how basically we add our filters and we can do the things right so our food details page is also means the food listing page is also done now the next thing that comes out after this page is uh we have to pass a key also in every mapping we have to pass a key so you can pass the key as a product dot id now the next thing after this thing that comes is uh the next page that we can go for is so if you can do filter like burger noodles pizza the things will be filtered out right so like that so yeah this part is also functional give it a thumbs up if you are liking this yeah now the next thing that is uh, adding to the cart so let us get started with the cart page so in add to cart we will be having the simple thing first the all i will define all the the use states and the dispatch and navigate functions then i will uh, call the api so let us first import this thing so i will simply import all the stuff like add to cart delete from cart get cart place order apis because we will be needing all this right and then after that we will be having the snack bar and the user slice and after that first thing that we will be doing here is we will be calling the function to get the current cart products right so and the delivery details state is also needed so i have defined a use state for the delivery details then i will call the get products that is simply taking the token and calling the get carts and setting loading and setting the products basically that are in the cart and it will calculate a subtotal from the items that are currently present in your cart it will be calculating a subtotal and after that thing we will be having a string converter because the delivery uh, uh, address is converted into a single string basically 
so this is basically used to convert it into a single string and then we have the place order uh, api calling so we have a function place order where we will be checking if the delivery details are filled or not if the delivery details are filled not filled then we will show an snag bar error and if it is filled then i will check the token then total amount i have to get and i will set that and i will get the product and address and the total amount right so that is how basically we can place our orders and then i will simply call the api place order and then we will dispatch that order is placed successfully and i will set the loading and that thing as not uh, right so yeah now put this in the whole thing in a try block and a catch block so if any error occurs so it will be shown so in the catch block you can add the cvrt by open snack bar that failed to place order try again right so that is how we have defined our uh, place order function and now in the use effect call the get products because whenever you open this page you should get all the products that are present right and now we will be having uh, first let us map the things that we have so if it is in loading state then i will uh, show simply a circular progress bar and if it is not loading i will uh, show the wrapper part right so now this is done and in this wrapper uh, we will be having a products dot list sorry products dot length so if the length is equal to equal to zero i will show that cart is empty and if it is length is greater than zero i will show the products basically so yeah now you can see length is zero by default basically something is in the cart so now after this thing that we have to show here is products dot map i will map all the products that are present in the table right so i will write products dot map item and i will paste this one and inside that first thing is image so i will give item then question mark dot image sorry we have to add the product so that will be item dot product dot image right and uh, let us see yeah now you can see the food image is coming perfectly fine now add the products title so it would be item dot product name and then we have the product description item dot product description then we have the item value that would be item dot product dot price dot original and in the details let us do one thing in the details on the product we have to make a style uh, we have to give a max width so give it a max width of 80 pixel so now it is uh, still not looking good so in the details we have to give i guess so i will give it the i will give this in the mm, it is overloading so yeah let us give in the details yeah now it is perfect right so in the details i have given max with a 60 pixel now it is perfect and uh, for smaller screen say for for the max with 700 pixel we will give it a max with a uh, you can give uh, 100 pixel for normal 180 and for smaller screen 60 pixel like that and now the next thing that comes out is the uh, increasing the cart items and decreasing the cart items right so for i will first set the quantity that we have and in the on click of this i will call add to cart add to cart function where i will pass the item as the product id and we will be calling this also remove from cart so first one would be remove from cart when you click on the minus and add to cart when you click on the plus so let's define the two functions that add to cart so first is add to cart we will be taking the id then we will be taking the token then we will be having our add to cart product id and quantity and then we will be passing that thing and we will be calling the api and then we will be setting a reload so it will be reloaded whole page and from remove to cart the same thing we will be taking the quantity and the type if it is full then we will delete the whole thing and if it is the quantity i will reduce the quantity like that so our this functionality should also work so i will pass in remove the cart as item dot quantity minus one so current quantity minus one like that and um, the next thing that we will do here is uh, for deleting the thing we will do the same thing remove from cart but it will be full so it will delete the whole thing so if you click on the plus it will be increased by one on minus decrease by one and if you click on the delete the whole item will be deleted right 
now before deleting the thing let us calculate the subtotal so there is a function calculate subtotal and i will take the two decimal place and i will do for this also for each item the subtotal would be quantity into product original price like that okay so we have the thing now the coming to the delivery details part so this is very simple we will be placing the value as delivery details or first name and on changing of that we will set first name as eto target or value same for the other also the last name would be the same thing do the same for the email address phone number and the complete address do the same thing we will be having the same thing so that's it so do the phone number we will do with the phone number and uh, the last thing we will do for the complete address so and on the button click uh, it would be loading is button loaded and is disabled is also button loaded and the function would be the place order so if you have seen that when i clicked on place order with the details uh, the cart is empty that means our function is working perfectly so our cart is also done right now the last thing that we are left out here is the food details page basically so when you click on each of the food items the details page should come right so first thing we have to take is the id from the params of the url so i will write id as use params and then i will import the rest of the things that are needed that is the icons and the apis that we will be needing and the snack bar and the dispatch function so yeah now let's do for products card let us do a on click function so whenever someone clicks on each of the product card we will be navigating them to the uh, shop uh, sorry dishes slash and that product id so product details page would be open for that product right so let us click to navigate yeah now define the navigate so const navigate equals to use navigate and uh, dish yeah now if you click on this any of the food item you can see that it is taking to the details page right now first thing in the details page we will call the get product by id api so we have the get product details id we will passing the id and then we are getting the response and we are setting the product and we will call this one whenever the page is being loaded using a use effect right so now you can use a loader also so i will do loading circular progress and then i will wrap we will wrap the wrapper and then after that we will set the image here so we will check that if the product dot image exists so yeah now you can see the image is coming and next thing we have is the title or the name product dot name then we have the price we will set the price product dot price dot original then we have the product dot price dot mrp and then we have the percentage of off so i will let products dot price dot off percentage off right like that perfect and then after that we have the product description we can give product dot description it is coming perfect and then we have the ingredients so we will simply map the ingredients product dot ingredients dot map and then we will simply map that so i will write ingredients only in the items perfect yeah now it is perfect right now in the button wrapper so inside this button wrapper we will be having our favorite icon so say if the left icon is uh, so means if the item is already favorite so i will uh, show that it is hard with red color and if it is not i will show the outline only just right so for of now it is not favorite so i am showing only the outline so uh, we have to implement the favorite function also that adding that one and also is loading is favorite loading i have added and after that uh, we have to add the uh function which will check that it is favorite or not so i have uh, added the add to cart from same as that we did so the same thing we have used here add to cart function and and then we will use this on the button click whenever someone clicks on add to cart it will set uh, the on click method as add to cart the next thing that we are having here is remove favorite so i will set set favorite and i will have the token for so for add to favorite we have the same thing that we did in there like the cart we will be taking the product id and we will be doing the add to favorite the same part and also for the remove from favorite or uh, to check the favorite we will be calling the api the same thing and i will set if the favorite id is being included 
if the user the all the favorite items that are present if it is included then only i will set that to favorite right and that is done so basically how the thing actually works and on click of the favorite button we will check if it is already favorite then i will call remove from favorite and if not then i will call the add to favorite so if you click on add to cart you can see that it is adding to the cart and you can also increase the items right and also like you can come to okay sorry something went wrong no doubts matched okay so this would be dishes uh, i guess so yeah it would be dishes for the card yeah now if you click on any of the product it is coming so you can see that it is favorite is also the working fine so now uh, all the things are working perfectly fine right so the next thing uh, that we are going to do here is uh, checking the favorite and add to products card so in each of the card item we need to call the functions so i have just imported them and i have pasted from the details page itself like adding to card and uh, favorite adding to favorite removing from favorite and checking if it is favorite or not now we will be having a dispatch also in the products card so make it dispatch yeah now uh, in the products card called a use effect and it will check the favorite uh, that is done whenever it is loaded it will check the favorite now on same thing we will do for the favorite rounded icon also in the favorites card so for whenever it is in the favorite uh, I will show the color red field and if it is not I will show the border right and uh, the next thing that we are going to have here is the shopping bag so on click of this I will add this in the product okay so let's just check this one so I have done favorite so that are coming favorited and uh, let us make a circular progress bar so it is loading state it will be showed that when it is uh, loading it would be shown right so let's see yeah now it is perfect so you can see that uh, this items are favorited is already showing and if you come to the favorite it is also loading and it will be showing so you can see the noodles that are some of the items yeah now you can see the noodles and burger are favorited but some items are not right so it, that means our thing is working perfectly fine so now our favorite card is also working fine so i will change the on click to uh, this one so that it is clickable else uh, you can't click on the favorite and add to cart you will be taking up to the that page so if you click on this button you will see it is loading and it is added to favorite right and also add to cart function is working you can give your details and you can click on the card and your order would be placed now your homework is there go and perform the orders uh, thing right so that thing would be a awesome thing if you implement that one also right so perfect all the things are working perfect give it a thumbs up and the next part of this video is deploying this whole application right through your github i hope this ui is pretty much good uh yeah so you can go in my github also you will be getting the code in my github account so my username is rishav chanda so you can go there first let us initialize this one so give it an initial commit and uh, publish that in your client publish that in your mon food delivery app so i will be publishing it in public directory so it is publishing so you can go in my github you can check this one so if you see that uh, human stack food delivery app the previous one e-commerce is also present you can check that one also now open your netlify we are going to deploy this one in your netlify account and we are using render for backend deployment so open your render click on new and then select your repository then click on configure account then we will configure we give you a password and login simply in the render and once you have logged in just select the repository you want to deploy so one stack delivery app and then the next thing would be connecting that one so click on connect and then set up the default things so branch would be master the root directory would be server then runtime would be uh, build command would be npm install then npm start would be your start command use the free one and in the advanced use the env file 
dot env and paste the uh, env contents out here and uh, after that uh, okay okay so we did one mistake delete this repository first because we have only pushed the client here we have to push both the things client and server so i will delete this one i will simply delete this one i will come back again and now i will first thing that we will do here is i will open this in the folder and i will place a getting node outside this one and i will change this one say client first then node modules and then we will be having server then node modules and then we will be having server and then dot env file so like that we have to modify and also you have to delete the git file in your client because uh, that is by default coming right so we have deleted that one uh, now you can do here is uh, you can open this in your vs code once again and now you will see the changes will be only 59 i guess uh, initializing the repository yeah now give a initial commit and do the same thing publish the branch in public and after that uh, it will be published and in the things are perfect now so now if you reload you can see that food delivery man is coming now in the render let us do one thing let us reload this one this is because it is not valid right so i will try to connect it again i will connect it again uh, i will connect the food delivery man and then i will do the connect and the same thing that we did give it a root directory server then build command would be npm install and npm start would be the start command use a free trial and then the advanced give env file paste your mongodb and jwt and simply click on create web web server and then in the netlify you can authorize your github and then you will be seeing so click on deploy on github uh, it should take you to the okay meanwhile let us check the render so click on deploy with github okay some issue is there with the netlify i guess so let us do one thing let us uh, let us check with logging out once so don't use this one so let us log out and let us log in again and see meanwhile you can see that your render is connected and your it is showing that food delivery app uh, monstack it is running and mongodb is also connected right so in postman if you want you can check this api also so check for cart you can check for the cart or any other thing so for sign in only we are checking so if you see we can send in the body we have and in response we are getting the response right so that means our api is deployed successfully now change the base url in your application and then uh, commit this one and push that also right in your github so in the netlify that will be reflected so this is done so now coming to the netlify click on add new site deploy with github and then authorize yeah now it is working so now search the food delivery man application and then add a site name that anything food delivery gfg checking the availability then give the base directory as client then add a build command as npm run build and then in the publish directory it would be build client and deploy that one and in the environment variable you have to configure this one in the environment variable add uh, add ci as false okay and then create the variable and let's just see now if it is deployed or not so in the deploys check the logs it should be deployed so yeah give it a thumbs up if you have liked today's video and if you have watched the previous video of the e-commerce website or you will be getting a new video regarding the that is a secret you will be also getting a new video of uh, great ui ux in okay so some deployment error is there so let us see the error where the error is
so initialize is in completed build we are having build error so okay so m run build i think the build command i have made some mistake so it will be npm run build basically so i have made a mistake it would be npm run build i have saved this one and i will redeploy this one again and i think it should work now so i have redeployed this one and uh, let us see it's in progress let's just wait i think it would be like deployed now yeah now you can see that build command is done now it is deploying so now you can see that build and deployment is completed successfully now you can go in the preview or you can open your site and you can see that it will be live right so let us open and see done so i can go in the site configuration and if i open this one you can see our application is coming perfectly fine we have all our dishes and the whole website is looking pretty much awesome i am i am personally loving this one so you can click on sign in so you have different categories different food items right and uh, yeah and you can get to your favorite before that we have to sign in so you can give your email address i will give my one and then we will give our password and we can simply sign in so you can see that you have signed in successfully if you go back to your home you can see your favorite items right and one thing that we have missed out in the navigation bar we haven't give the favorite and that part basically so in the navigation bar you have to add that part uh, the favorite and the cart would be shown if the user is present right that we made a mistake somewhere so just uh, push this one and it would be like reflected from your netlify itself so yeah so it is it will be redeployed you can see that automatically when you push something it will be redeployed so it will be like building again let us just wait and see for that so yeah it is it is completed now you can open that one and if you reload you can see the favorite and card is coming so yeah so all the things are perfect so that's it for today and bye bye have a great day